Hey everybody, listen, welcome so much to WAVN The Trend, where we're definitely trending the music, the culture, and the conversations. I am your girl, Talisa Franklin. You know anything about me, I am one that I love our community. And today our conversation is definitely a conversation in which our culture needs to have. Let me tell you something, it is time for us as a culture to stand together and let's get back to business. Not just to say I'm going to wear a mask, but get back to business and making sure our business is taken care of. You know, I was having a conversation with somebody this morning and they said something to me and it was just really alarming to me because this individual will always say, wear a mask, wear a mask, wear a mask. But now my conversation, when I see them, don't tell me to wear a mask. I'm going to say, where is your vaccination Come card? On. Because I just found out they're up speaking, talking, and praying and laying hands on folk in the church, but you ain't even been vaccinated. Girl, boy, sit down somewhere <laughs> and get vaccinated. Let me tell you, this is the real and the raw of trend reload for me, right? I am the leader. I am the voice. This view and opinion is from me, the leader, because I believe that in order for us to get where we need to be, that we got to stand together. We as leaders, we got to stand and lead by example. I made sure for the trend before anybody else was vaccinated, I believe I was the first to get vaccinated because I wanted to be that type of leader that leads by example. My question is to you leaders, are you leading by example? Are you really practicing what you preaching? Are you really talking the talk and doing what you're talking about? Time is up. Let's get that shot in our arm and let's get vaccinated because this Delta variant and so many other is killing us. And not only that, it's killing our children. And I don't know about you, but I want my child to live. Do you want to see your children live? And so after today's conversation, we have pulled together uh, my dear pastor friend, apostle, the one, the only, Pastor Ricky D. Floyd, the proud pastor that is a leader in this community on all areas of the Pursuit of God Transformation Center. And I'm telling you something, when you say transformation center, he's truly a, transform, a transformative man that's transforming the community of Frazier and abroad. And he understands, I saw him, he stood and got his vaccination as well. So you I'm telling you, it is time for us as leaders because not only do we have him, we have people here that has been affected by COVID-19 directly, and we've had somebody here on this panel that has been affected by losing someone that they love, their life partner. And then we have another amazing woman on this panel that's going to help you because you got to be something mentally wrong with you while you won't get something right. So I had to bring my good, good friend, Dr. Jane Abraham of the Heart Center because it got to be something in the row. You need to go sit on her couch if you ain't got yourself back there. Come on, y'all. It's a real and raw conversation. Pastor Floyd, go on because you know I'm ready. Honey. See, I can't get all the way wrong online, but I can get raw today. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm, I'm grateful. I thank God for <clears throat> Talisha, uh, who is doing what, what she's called to do, and that's use her influence, her gifts, her talents to have an impact on the community. You know, we as ministers and as business people, we have, I call it kings and priests. She's walking in the office of king and priest, business, but also spiritual accountability and responsibility to our community. And God has blessed us, with, blessed her and blessed us with her uh, to use this as an opportunity to seek and save that which is lost. It is not just good enough for us to get people in heaven. We have a responsibility to have people to live a better life here on earth. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the reason that we are convicted, convinced, and even converted because, you know, like some of you all who are probably hesitant about having the vaccine, I was that. I was that, and God took me through almost like a four stage of conviction uh, to now that there is a compelling, uh, uh, almost as much as I'm preaching the gospel, because you know uh, I'm, I'm shouting from the mountaintop now that we got to get vaccinated. And uh, uh, two of the families that are in this room right now, the impact uh, that uh, lack of vaccination or late vaccination has caused upon their lives. Uh, and I thank God for these people who are very close to me. I love, respect, and honor and celebrate the presence of these people who are being transparent and using their testimonies and their pains uh, to convict you that you need to get vaccinated in this season. Mm -hmm. and, and let me say something that you pointed out too. You know, a lot of people, we're not just talking about the deaths 
and I'm so glad you and your infinite wisdom uh, brought the doctor on here with us uh, because even though the McNairs are living and even though Mr. Reginald, uh, he, he lived, his wife, there are some, some mental torment and damage that even goes along with the fact that you're still living that we're not addressed. And I think that's one of the reasons that we're seeing drug addiction, overdoses at an all-time high, domestic violence at an all-time high, people driving like, the, oh, I'm bringing up an old terminology, bat out of hell. Mm. Y'all, anybody old enough to remember that Maybe. bat yeah. out of hell? To, yeah. People are driving like bat out of hells. Uh, and, and crime and murder rate, all those things are because of the anxiety that has come from COVID. Mm -hmm. And so thank God for you giving us this opportunity to let people hear. And, and I don't understand why the government, why the city officials are not doing what you're doing today, and that's letting real stories be heard. Mm -hmm. People can manipulate statistics, they can lie about statistics, but here you have people that they can touch, I've touched in the community. We've seen this man on news years. We, I, this man has been a part of my ministry for six years. She's a YouTube sensation. And these are real people. These are not statistics. These are not what the doctor said. These are real stories, and I can't seem to understand why the masses of, of, of health departments are not letting real stories like this get out. Mm. So thank you so much for bringing the real, the relevant, the raw. And I'm telling you, uh, and one thing, we're all sitting at the table. We need to start bringing these issues to the table and addressing them and getting to the root of it. Because one thing, Pastor Floyd, uh, you know and many people know, I am... Uh, determined to continue to have these conversations that our culture needs to have. I can tell you all day long that Jesus lives, mm -hmm. and I can tell you to get to praying, but if you ain't doing no work and you ain't doing nothing, and there are so many people, the stories that I've even heard are people say, well, I'm not getting the vaccination, Pastor Floyd. I'm taking a lot of vitamins. Baby, I take plenty of vitamins a day, mm -hmm. but I still got vaccinated. Yeah. And so we got to understand that we, let me, now we can be real. Let's do it. How can you continue to worry about being vaccinated? Oh, they gonna do this, doing that. But you're sharing a blunt every day. You're sharing somebody, a husband, a wife, every single day, unprotected. And you scared of a vaccine. Come on, people. Uh -oh. Taking all these free food baskets. Come on, here. If, if somebody want to get rid of you, all they had to do was put it in, in oh. food baskets. Yes. These free food baskets that they're giving away. <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> so we got to we need to prioritize yeah. what really matters and what matters is us living. You know, I, I put a post this morning to pass the floor uh, and you all that's watching this. Do me a big, big favor. Share this, yeah. share this, share this. It needs to be heard and seen yes. for people of all faiths, all walks of life coming together to get you to understand the importance of getting vaccinated. I put a post on this morning and I was intentionally and I said, you know, we say, as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. But as for me in my house, we got vaccinated. Uh, yeah. Can you say that Listen, about your house? While serving the Lord. While serving the Lord. <laughs> and so and, if, and for my son, when they made the statement, they say 12 and up, he, he was like, mama, let's go do it. Mm -hmm. You know, because I share with him that we trust God, but we trust the medicine and we trust the. And I've seen people that had all kind of medical procedures and they trusted all that, but they won't trust the vaccine. Right. It got to be something mentally wrong, Dr. Jane. You got to help us. You're the one got the good degree. I ain't got no degree like that. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. There is something wrong. And, and I think that the <clears throat> myths that are permeating our system right now are just keeping people in the dark. People are afraid of shots, for one thing. And when you turn on a TV, the first thing you see on the news is somebody getting a shot. Mm -hmm. And so that scares people in and of itself. But so many of the people of our community are just, uh, they're convinced that there is something wrong with this particular virus that's permeated the whole globe. And they think that it's... Um, not real. They think it's a hoax. Mm. And even though we've lost 600,000 million people and all the folks that, like, day before yesterday, I don't know what the count was uh, yesterday, but day before yesterday, there were 53,000 new cases of Jesus. this Delta variant mm. that has really um, 
uh, just started taking people in droves. Mm. So we're we're climb, climbing again, you know, and, and the uptick is um, is not enough to keep people from going. I mean, the fear is not enough to keep people from going and getting um, vaccinated. But they're staying home. They're not paying attention. They're they're uh, uh, buying into the myths that there are all kinds. And I don't want to I don't want to bring those up. But there mm-hmm. are a lot of myths out there that are saying. Um, uh, they don't need to be getting this vaccination in their arms. But um, yeah, I'm vaccinated. My whole staff is vaccinated. Mm. Uh, we were some of the first people on, on, on the front line to get vaccinated because we work with so many folks, young people who will not get vaccinated. And they're carrying this disease everywhere they go, and we know it. And you know my my business, which which is with substance use and mental health disorders, mm-hmm. uh, the department uh, has told us that we need to start wearing masks again, even yeah. if we are vaccinated. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So I mean, it's just it's reaching uh, devastating proportions again. So the only thing I know to do, and let me make this very clear, the people who are getting sick are the people who have not been vaccinated. Mm -hmm. The people who are vaccinated, like those of us sitting at this table, are not getting sick, folks. They're not getting sick. We are not getting sick. And uh, But because of the folks who are not being vaccinated, they carry this disease with them everywhere they go, because they are exposed to each other all the time, at least in my subculture of substance use and mental health disorders. So I think the key is for people just to trust the process and, and trust that God is not and science are not gonna do things that are gonna harm us. You know, back when I was a child, I'm gonna tell my age here, there was a, a polio epidemic and uh, they diagnosed me in my hometown with polio and uh, they sent me to Vicksburg I'll never forget it it was Vicksburg Mississippi and when I walked in there were children and and adults all over that hospital they were in, they were everywhere they were just stacked up and I'll never forget seeing this young black teenager a little boy well, he was older than me, but when I look back, he was a little boy, and he was just devastated with polio. And so when I got back, to, they, they tested me. I didn't have polio, but when I got back home, the whole town of Leland, Mississippi, had to get vaccinated because I had been subjected to everyone who had polio. Wow. And so <clears throat> every, it was like the whole town went out and got vaccinated, you know? Yeah. And, and none of us had it, you know, because we went and got vaccinated. And that's what people are forgetting, all of these treacherous diseases that have been uh, obliterated with vaccinations worked. They mm-hmm. really worked. Yeah. And if people would just trust that this is going to work, we could defeat this disease, yeah. just like we have. D- Doctor, I, I hear what you're saying, but a reality in the, in the community that is rejecting the virus the most, the African-American community, uh, when they're, they're not going to trust the system. They're not going to trust the government. They're not going to trust the vaccine. They're not going to trust the, the distributor of the vaccine. And, and most of us at this table could say we had the battle with that trust because the, the system to many of us has not been consistent and kind and faithful and they've documented things in the past oh God, where, where they've not. And, and, and I'll say this, I'm glad you brought this because I want to say this, I do believe, uh, and I've gotten delivered, I used to be a strong conspiracy theorist, I do believe that there are some kind of efforts that are being put out there for depopulation or population control. Yes. One is called abortion. Okay, I ain't gonna stay on that too long. But that, that's one of them. Uh, I believe even the passing of marijuana bills, which plays a role in the reproductive system, is one of those as well. But I want you to, I want you to think, my mind shifted when I saw the neighborhoods 
that they sent the vaccine to and made it most convenient at. When I saw that the first locations that they put for the vaccines was in the fairground area, which logically doesn't make sense to me if almost 70% of the people that are dying from the vaccine are in black and brown neighborhoods and you put it at the fairground, if you do a two, three mile radius of the fairground, some of the most wealthiest and old money people <clears throat> in Memphis live in those areas. 60, 70, 80, 90 year old, wealthy, mostly Caucasian people. And when they made that the area that they're targeted on the vaccine, that gave me a piece about the vaccine. If they had have came to the hood first with the vaccine, <laughs> I would have been more reluctant to take the vaccine. Yeah. I begged them to bring the vaccine to the, to the hood, which lets me know. So what if, for those of you conspiracy theorists, let me help you out. What if the conspiracy is they're using reverse psychology on you? Mm. What if the conspiracy theory is we know that you're going to be scared to take the vaccine and you're probably not going to take it and the statistics are showing that because the majority of people that are not taking the vaccine are brown people, black people, and poor white people. Can y'all agree with me on that? Yeah. You're not taking the vaccine and you're dying at a rate in some cities, 80% of the people that are dying from COVID are black and brown people. So if your conspiracy theory is right, then they flipped it on you and you not taking the vaccine is leaving you open and, and increasing your chance of dying, mm. watch this, and being a bullet to somebody in your family. Mm. And so I need, I need and, and here's, at, at first I've progressed. At first I was not for the vaccine, then I, ha I had a, a, a moment with God and he showed me the scripture where he said you should drink anything deadly and it shall poison it shall not harm me and this, he showed me the scripture where the man was bit by the serpent injected by the serpent he slung it into the fire and lived so initially God gave me a piece about taking it and I progressed from that to then encouraging it people encouraging the people in power to make it available mm -hmm. I never I, I didn't go from everybody need to take it I went to those who want it at least need to have access to, to it, it. Mm -hmm. and, and and when you put it even when you put it in black churches that are almost in the suburbs that are closer to Millington and Arlington <laughs> and Bartlett than they are to North Memphis Orange Mound Scudderfield uh, Let's be real. North Memphis French, ain't yeah. going to buy it. Yeah, yeah. They ain't coming to buy it. Yeah, they ain't going. They ain't going. You know, I'm just wanting for right. good to go yeah. to buy it. Right. But I got good driving yeah. license. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and no one. And no one. <laughs> and, 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 and a car that will make it there. And a car. And a car. Yeah. Because ain't no bus. No bus line. He never even thought, I mean, the buses even come through Barlett and Arlington. Right, right. So, so yeah, they, no, there are more that probably go through Barlett than there are <laughs> in some of these neighborhoods that they have the vaccine available. But here's what I want to talk about right now. Here's another thing that I want to point out, and then we're going to release the microphone, because me okay. and you, we will get Yeah, baby, we are Yes, But yes. here's another thing I want to point out, because a lot of our young people, one, one of my pastor friends, he says he's not getting the vaccine because... 80% uh, of the people recover. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's look at one of my, my spiritual sons, been with me almost 18 years. He recovered, watch this, but at what cost? Mm. Right. He's a newlywed, hard working man, worked for the post office, one of the best men I've ever had in the history of the Pursuit of God Church. He was in the hospital 72 days. A newlywed man that his wife has got a struggle with 72 days. Am, am I going to be a, a newlywed widow? Yeah. Did you hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. newly a wed newlywed widow. widow. He's, he's got to be concerned. Will I ever be able to go back? He's a business owner, <laughs> uh, uh, does so much for the community. He'll help mentor young boys and help them get in the auto mechanic. Will I ever be able to practice my craft again? He's recovered, 
but at what cost? Mm -hmm. And so I, I would like for you to get an opportunity because here's a yes. couple. Uh, 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 the wife decided, and did y'all discuss it? Uh, the wife decided to take the vaccine. The husband didn't. So I'll, I'll just let you kind of guide the questions on what direction you want to go with them on that because <coughs> this, this story is important. And absolutely, to be told. absolutely. Uh, first of all, thank you all for even coming out to share. Uh, something Pastor Floyd said that was deep. Imagine being a newlywed widow. And as a sister blessed with a husband, and to only to think of that could be very heartbreaking. And so let's kind of talk about your story. Uh, you got vaccinated. Yes. Your husband did not. Yeah, I had conversations, I'm sure, prior to, but you were determined to say, I'm going to get vaccinated. Kind of share your story <clears throat> of before he even got COVID-19, of the conversations that you was having together, of the, because I'm sure every couple have had these conversations, especially when it's divided, whether you should and should not. Now, he's the man of your house, and I know how your shepherds teach, you know, the men leave, but it was one time, that time, you felt this was God saying, I had to get vaccinated. Kind of share your story. Well, initially, uh, we both were like, we're going to wait and see. As Pastor Floyd said, I know the history of how um, black people have been experimented on, so I thought of those types of things. So it was a wait and see. But um, I began to pray about it. Um, I have an autoimmune disorder. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about all of that, and I just felt convicted that I needed to get the vaccine. So mm -hmm. I came to my mm -hmm. husband, I said, how would you feel about me getting the vaccine? He said, I'm fine with you getting it. I'm just not there yet. Mm. And so I didn't push for him to get it. I always made sure he had masks, you know, hand sanitizer. We did those things. So um, I got the vaccine. 10 days after I got my second shot, he tested positive for COVID. Mm. And it was devastating. Um, there was a moment, you know, where I was like, I really wish he had gotten the vaccine, especially when he went from just not feeling well to ICU within like, what, four or five hours. Wow. <gasps> not days, but hours. Hours. Um, I'm used to him going, going, going. Yeah. And so that Monday when I saw he had slowed down, I mean, to the point where I had never seen before mm -hmm. in the 18 months we've been together. Well, now it's been 18 months. But um, I'm like, you need to go get tested. And before his rapid test came back, because of his oxygen levels, they were like, you need to go straight to the ER. I sat outside in my car from about 6 or 7 p.m. until about 2 o'clock in the morning because I didn't want to leave. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to hear something and know, found out he not only had COVID, but pneumonia in both lungs. And his stats, you know, his stats at least were so bad that they had to send him to ICU. And for three weeks, I couldn't lay eyes on him. Mm. He was too weak to talk on the phone. Um, I did a YouTube video praying for him. I sent to him just for him to play, to hear my voice, to hear me praying for yeah. him. But it was hard. It was really hard. Um, the nursing staff was great. I stayed in communication day shift, night shift, but it's nothing like being there. And I'm thinking about him being there alone. Yes. And I'm like, if I could just hold his hand, if I could just be there and hold his hand. Mm. I even tried to convince the nurses. I'm like, I've been vaccinated. Yeah. <laughs> Can I come in? Nope. Wow. So let's, let me let me ask your husband. So here you are. She's having a conversation, and you're saying not yet. What was going on in you? Yeah, I mean, I had some reservations, uh, most mostly because you know I wanted to see if there's any kind of side effects. Um, then then some of the myths that the doctor was talking about, you know that plays a part is running through your head but uh i had intentions of getting it as soon as i was comfortable enough to see that people weren't dying from the vaccination mm -hmm. and uh but i just didn't make it uh and, and you had mentioned earlier about people saying they're taking the vitamins uh, you know she's 
she did good. We had the mask, we had the hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. I was taking vitamin C, vitamin D, <coughs> zinc, multivitamin. Yeah, and, that's it. Yeah, so I was taking it every day. Plus, I worked uh, 16 hours per day, physical well, labor, six days a week. And so, uh, I mean, I had stamina mm -hmm. and, uh, and strength and could work circles around a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. And um, so when it hit me, then at first I thought I had, may have had like the flu and I was just gonna push through it. But then I got so weak and couldn't just, my, I was like I couldn't catch enough breath to kind of restore myself. So, mm -hmm. so I, you know, it just got to the point where I had to leave work. Told him I just, I just can't function. I, I'm just too exhausted. Mm -hmm. And uh, she taught me into getting the COVID test, and that's when they checked my my oxygen sats, and was was uh, 91, 92. They said if 92, you got to go to the hospital. So mm -hmm. she sent me to the hospital, and I went went in there, and I was. I just felt like, you know, running a little fever, right, just right. feeling a little bad, but it just progressed from from that point on, and I got worse and worse and worse. So when they finally came back and gave you the diagnosis that you had COVID-19, what happened in your mind? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm thinking, well, it's just going to be, you know, a fever in a couple of days, and I'll be up out of here, mm -hmm. and uh, I was wrong. Yeah. 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 It uh it, it seemed like I went further down. He although they were trying to bring me up and, and as one doctor had, had mentioned, he said, You do realize it's a miracle you're still here today. Mm. Because they, they, they didn't they didn't have to intubate me, we shoved the tube and all down my throat, but they said that was the next step. Mm -hmm. And they said if we'd have done that, most people don't make it once they get there. How, how long did it take you before you realize <laughs> yourself? Man, I'm in trouble. I, yeah. I need God to move on my behalf yeah. quickly. How, how long were you in there I, before I you became that, conscious uh, of that? Uh, because I, I think I was so out of it. But I, I believe it was that 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 evening uh, where I was admitted. That was April the 27th. And because I felt so bad, because it was like I was like, man, I can I can't even breathe. It was like I was using a third of my lungs. I can't. I couldn't take a deep breath in mm. at all. I mean, there was no possible way because I tried. <laughs> And so like a third of my lungs and I'm trying to breathe and then they're trying to put mask on me and then they forget to flip the switch on and I'm trying to suck in and, and mm. suffocate. It just seemed like everything was working against me. And I'm, I'm of the mindset, I'm strong, I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna beat this. But uh, when, that, when that type of reality hits you in the face and in your body, uh, you be like, man, this is a whole lot worse than I thought it'd be. Yeah. So you say you thought you was going to beat this. Was there ever a time in your process that you felt that <clears throat> when you your wife dropped you off at the hospital, that was your last time of seeing your wife? Uh, not, not at that moment, but it was somewhere in the process when probably within the first three days. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because it was, it was so bad that I, I really felt like in another breath or two, I'd be dead. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So you're in the hospital. Uh, you sick for 71, 72 days. Mm -hmm. You come home. Life was never the same. Right. Yeah. And I'm still, I'm still, you know, recovering and kind of building up even now. So, and I've been home about three weeks, I think. So, mm -hmm. uh, and and I'm on oxygen now. Right. Uh, you know, I you know I hook up in my house and I can, I can walk about. 50 to 75 feet and I'm give out mm -hmm. because my my legs get rubbery uh, my arms are weak mm -hmm. I don't have the strength I, and I, I can remember just uh, but I push myself because I want to get better I want to get right. back to work and so just standing up uh, I began to feel all the muscles aching in my back and mm -hmm. my legs and my feet and then change pair of shoes a whole nother different set of muscles having to relearn how to hold me up off the ground how to get up out of a seat and, and that's you know that was it was a struggle just to i remember my granddad used to have to rock to get up out of his recliner mm -hmm. and here i'm trying to i'm having to do that to get out because my muscles it it attacked my muscles and and then i use oxygen um, muscles use oxygen so then it depletes my oxygen so uh 
those things there and then just be out of breath uh, just doing a little bit. I remember one time and I sat up in the bed because they had the SATS machine on me and they want you 96 or so, but, and just laying there, I'm at 96. And they said, okay, sit up and I, and immediately went to 70. Mm. It was just, it, I dropped so fast and I got dizzy. I couldn't, I had to lay back. So I had, my body had to learn how to function again. Right. Because of the, my lungs had to learn how to function again. And they're still learning. And like I tell people, I'm not as far along as I want to be. Yeah. But I'm thankful to be this far. Because I tell you, when I was in ICU, I saw those blue lights going off and everybody runs in there. Probably 10, 15 people seemed like going and trying to revive one person. Mm -hmm. And then 30 minutes to an hour later, they coming out in the body bag. Wow. I wow. saw five of them do, while I was in ICU. And then they come in and they wipe the whole room down. Mm -hmm. And then they put somebody else in there. Mc McNair, you being a newlywed, do you do you feel, and I always <laughs> tell men, I don't understand why a man wouldn't want to be married. I'm concerned about a man that don't want a wife. Do you feel that part of your fight to live was because you knew that you had a new bride that was depending on you, that was waiting on you? Do, is that one of the things that you pulled on? Uh, man, I, I mean, I just made a covenant relationship with this lady. I, I, got, to, I got to pull a lot of this. Some, is is yeah. that one of your driving forces yeah. that I, you I saw? Was, I was concerned because it's all of a sudden, I mean, we weren't expecting this. So first I was concerned. And then was like, wow, you know, now uh, instead of just a couple of days, it turned into months. And then she's had to take on extra responsibilities, uh, you know, checking, keeping up with all the bills and, and everything that, uh, that I was doing. And uh, in addition to what she had to do. And then she would come and see me uh, once they let her start coming. She'd come see me every day, bring me snacks and things like that. And my love grew for her to see that she cared so much for me. It, it, it took us into a deeper level. And, and even when I saw that, I was like, it, it was more motivational to me that, wow, when you have somebody like this on your side, it's fantastic, mm. yeah. and, and it gave it gave. It, I I know it helped me uh, through the encouragement of the words she, the the text she sent, the cards, the photos she sent or brought, and uh, uh, the snacks and everything. It was uh, it was fantastic, and and really showed me how um, God used my wife to help me. Uh, to overcome this was just and so, I feel like so the I vows so much. the vows yeah. got tested you know right. I, I used to tell people I hate yeah. going to weddings because people don't realize what they're saying with exactly. those vows right. the for better yeah. or for yeah. worse yeah. for, for, for right. sickness and yeah. and help yeah. and I so pictures yeah and say that again um, because I brought, we'll oh I brought pictures and I put them all around the board there to the point where when I would walk down the hall they knew who I was yeah. because it they had seen my pictures in his yeah. room. Yeah. And I had several nurses and staff mention to me when they would mention to him, oh, your wife is so beautiful. You yeah, guys look great time. together. Said he would just light up. And if he didn't have a smile on his face before yeah. then, he would when they would mention us. Yeah. And so um, I just felt it was important. Yeah. If yeah. I couldn't be there, at least he could see us. Exactly. together yeah. somewhere yeah. in give him a reason room. to fight yeah. even more yeah. we, we yeah. want to yeah. we want to come back because i don't know how much and more let me time just say this one thing okay is real quick yeah. about the vow thing yeah. i got home and, and watched on the youtube video we had when we got married mm -hmm. and she was saying those vows and when it got to that point in sickness and health i broke into tears yeah. mm. it was awesome so wow. i want to ask you this there's just two questions i want to ask him before mm -hmm. we get with my brother first thing what would you share with someone now why they need to get the vaccination because you were on the fence mm -hmm. you didn't have enough information right. now here you are 70 70 days later right. uh body totally different right? Yeah, right and so your wife went and made the decision but you didn't what would you say mm. to someone else that maybe felt some of the same reservations in which you felt right yeah certainly why they need to go yeah. ahead and get, yeah, get the vaccination death is is one of the things that happens in and you could be dead and leaving your spouse by themselves, mm -hmm. or if you have nobody, you just you're through. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is you get extremely sick, 
and can't perform. Uh, you got a job that you're supposed to go to, and so you're out of a job for 72 days or mm. 90 days or six months. There ain't no income coming in. Right. So, and, and, you know, so uh, how are you going to pay rent? Mm. And then you, then you got, uh, uh, you don't want to, you don't want to affect your spouse uh, by giving them COVID. You don't want to affect your grandkids or your kids or, or uh, kids in the school and are in the neighborhood. Uh, death is real. I saw it firsthand. It was very traumatic and was nearly there myself. Uh, don't wait. We, it's been out long enough. We know there's no side effects mm -hmm. uh, except for maybe a 1% or something. Right. But uh, it's certainly not worth the risk of, of not taking the shot. You got just take the shot. Yeah. And so last question, and we're going to come back and we're going to have some more conversation. You experience physical well, let's talk oh. about the mental. Mm -hmm. What's happening in your mental state of mind that your whole life has changed? When you were getting ready to mm -hmm. marry your amazing bride, mm -hmm. when you were going back and forth to your business or your or your mm -hmm. place of business, but now 70 days later, you're not able to do the simple task mm -hmm. of putting on your shoes like you right. would want to. You have to walk through the house and you can't go do what you want to. Right. If you got children or grandchildren, you can't go out there and throw a ball and run and play right. catch right now because we believe yeah. in God for your healing. So. Let's talk about the mental because a lot of people don't understand when your body goes through these challenges. And let's talk about what's our mental state of mind. How you mentally handle it. Are you having some challenges where you know or you've already seen a therapist and you know that something at the next step that you have to, you're just concerned about getting there. Let's talk about the mental piece of it because I believe all of that plays a mental piece on you and your wife. It ain't just you. Mm -hmm. Y'all is one. Y'all became as one because your unity. So both of y'all going through a mental piece because when you mm -hmm. married him, this ain't what you had signed up all right. the way for, right? Women who say it all day yeah. long at the altar, yeah. but literally you lived it. Yeah, yeah. And so let's yeah. talk about that. Yeah, and that, and that's the biggest the biggest thing is is you know I was supposed to be the strong one and the one to step up and take care of, and all of a sudden uh, I'm not, mm -hmm. and she's having to take care of me. And uh, and that was tough for me uh, because I didn't want her to have that responsibility, but it but it landed that way. Mm -hmm. The other thing is I'm 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 kind of a person who, and like she said, I go and go all the time. I, I need to be doing something. Mm -hmm. I can't just sit there mm -hmm. and watch TV hours and hours a, a day, but yeah. end up having to do that. Mm -hmm. That was mental torture. Yes. But yeah. but for me, just not being able to do anything, all these things running through my head about what I need to fix when I get home, about this car I need to work on, this, uh, what about what about stuff I have at work, and those, they're, it's just sitting there, somebody else working on it, all those things, and then uh, and then anything else that pops up in between, and then, and then still to this day, people call and say, hey, uh, can you check, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not in any shape to <laughs> do anything yet. Yeah. And so, uh, it, it's very, and, and I understand too, uh, I think I would have been a lot better off, I mean, a lot worse off uh, in that aspect as far as having to go and do, had it not been for prayer and encouragement from my wife because yeah. she knew me so well that, you know, that I had to be doing something that mm -hmm. uh, her encouragement helped me to overcome that. And and uh, it just, and, then, and then being at the church with, with Pastor Floyd, a great motivational speaker yeah. and preacher, and uh, so those, just hearing the word, those words, and spending time with God in prayer, I, I'm, I am where I'm at today, and thankful for it. Great, we're excited about God and and what He's done in letting you to live. So here we are now. You that's listening, you've heard a, you've heard a story of life, right? He has life after the illness. Mm -hmm. Now you want to hear that you had an amazing wife that she still are, is blessed with her husband. But now you're going to hear from an amazing man that he don't have that same testimony. 